Hey, so have you ever wondered when it's the right time to book a flight with Ryanair? What if you could get an email alert when the price drops? Because you already know which flight you want to take, but you really want to know when is the best time to book it. Well, in this video, I'd like to show how you can build an automation that will do exactly that. I will show you how you can set up an automation that monitors Ryanair's website for price changes and sends you an email alert once a price has dropped. And you don't really have to be a super technical person to do this because I'm not a really super technical person either. This is really not difficult to set up, but Ryanair have actually made it super difficult to scrape prices off their website. They even made it illegal for the big players. But I'm going to show you a way on how we are going to do this with a little help from OpenAI Vision. I've added chapters to this video, so you can just skip ahead to the part that interests you the most. Before we get to the technical bit, just a quick recap why it's so difficult to get prices off Ryanair's website. So why is it so difficult to scrape Ryanair's website? Well, Ryanair has been in a battle with something called OTAs for years. What's an OTA? An OTA is a fancy way of saying online travel agency. You think about Kiwi.com or Skyscanner. And what these sites have done is they have scraped prices of Ryanair's website and then resold those flights at a markup. At such a significant markup that a court has now ruled that this is actually illegal for them to do. Usually an airline wants to distribute their flights as far and wide as possible, but Ryanair have always tried to generate direct bookings on their own website that makes it easier for them to upsell and actually earn money with their cutthroat prices. Even before the court ruling, Ryanair have made it illegal in their terms and conditions to use or scraping equipment on their website. Just a little background on how web scraping actually works. So for example, if we wanted to scrape the headline of this website here, what would we need to do? We would need to tell our scraping software to look for that headline. And how would we do this? Well, we would check out the source code of that website and we would see that this headline has a very distinctive class title. For example, here it's called MW page title main. And we will now tell the scraping software to look for MW page title main and take everything that it finds in this span segment. That's how our web scraper works. And one way to prevent this kind of scraper from working is to constantly rename this class title right here. And this is exactly what Ryanair is doing. Because if we look at their website and we inspect the element right here, we will see that these 2199 aren't called flight price one or something. They have a class title called, as you can see, NG, TNS, and a whole bunch of numbers. And something tells me that this class title will change really, really soon. So if you program a scraping software once to look for NG, TNS, and this number, the next day it might not work anymore, right? or even a second later. So this is one technical way to prevent web scraping. And this is just one of the very many ways on how to prevent web scraping, because if you're actually doing web scraping at scale, you will have to call the website that you are scraping from many hundreds of thousands of times. There are hundreds of thousands of flight prices here that change every hour or so. So you have to build really, really sophisticated software to hide the fact that you are scraping the website. But we are not going to dive into all that. We're just going to build a very simple scraper for personal use that will just identify one price from one flight connection. So what do we need to do? Well, first we need to take a screenshot of Ryanair.com, automatically, of course. Then we will take that screenshot and run it through the OpenAI Vision API to identify the prices. Then we are going to compare the current price to one that we have stored earlier. And if that price is lower than the one we have on, on file, then we're going to send an email alert. What do we need for all of this? Well, obviously you need a Google account. For the screenshot, I'm going to use a service called Scraping Bee. And for OpenAI, you will need to get an OpenAI key, which you can get under this link right here. All right, so before we actually get started, we need to do a few things. And one is, of course, to search for the flight that we want to track, right? So I've done just this. So this is a flight search from Cologne to Palma on a certain day. And this is the flight that I'm interested in. And this is the flight that I want to monitor. So. The next thing we need to do is I've set up a Google Sheet where I'm going to save the price that we're going to compare against. So let's set up the scenario. We're going to start with a scraping B action to take the screenshot. So I just click this button here, so it's called scraping B. There we have it. And we are going to take a screenshot. If this is the first time that you're setting this up, you will need to click up here and enter your scraping B API key. The next thing I need to do is I need to copy the URL of the search that we have performed with the flight search results. I'll leave desktop as is, screenshot full page, yes. No screenshot selector, window height, you can leave all these as is. Let's check out the advanced settings down here. Block the ads, why not? Do not block the resources. Cookies, country because you can leave all these things blank. But here, where it says JSON scenario, we need to enter something. Why? Because of this, if you open up 
the Ryanair search result for the first time, there's a cookie banner in the way and will prevent opening eyes from reading the price. So we need to dismiss this cookie banner here. So for this, we're just going to click on this yellow button, click inspect element, and we will see that this yellow button is called cl cookie pop-up with overlay button. Switching over into the scraping B documentation, we see that scraping B actually accepts little commands in order to do something like dismissing this cookie banner. So back in the scenario, we will enter instructions, click, and then the name of the cookie banner class inside of this JS scenario field. Everything else you can leave as is. The only thing we will change is down here where it says, wait, we will add 2000 milliseconds um, for the page to have some time to render. Then hit okay to save. Before we run this for the first time, I'd like to do two other things. First of all, please have a look at this watch icon over here. This, what this watch icon does is it sets the timer basically on how often your scenario should run. And the default setting is every 15 minutes. Now you might want to change that for several reasons. One of them is every time the scenario runs, it's a expense make.com credits. So you can run out of credits quite easily. Also, you will expense uh, scraping B credits and open API credits. So you want to be careful on how often you want you run this scenario. What you can do is you can change this, for example, to run once a day or once an hour. I'm going to leave this at once a day. And speaking of saving scraping B credits, what I want to do is I want to save the screenshot that comes out of here so we don't have to take it over and over again when we're testing the scenario now. The easiest way for me to do this is in a Google Drive. So I will click on the plus icon, I will search for Drive, I will select Google Drive and upload a file. Now it will ask me again to connect to my Google Drive. I've already done this. Then I can just select a folder from the list. I have a folder called test. And for the file, I can just choose any file name. I'm going to call it right there. But don't forget the file ending. Let's take, pick JPG. And for the data of the file, that is going to be the result of our scraping the action from the module before clicking OK to save. And now we can actually run the scenario for the first time. So click run once. You will see the scraping B action working. It has also uploaded something into the Google Drive. So let's switch over into Google Drive and see the result. Here we are with Ryanair.jpg. And here we have the screenshot of our flight search with the price that we are looking for. Great, so that's working. So the next thing I'd like to do is I download that file again because I now want to use it in the next action. And as I said, this is just an extra step to save me from spending credits. So I will select the file from the list. Folder is test and the file is Ryanair.jpg. So now we want to run that screenshot through OpenAI. So what we do is we search for open AI, we will select the analyze image dash vision for that. As with scraping B, you will need to set up your open AI connection. If you're using this for the first time, you need an API key and you can get that from the link I showed you earlier and then enter this up here where it says add your connection. Now the fun part, entering the prompt, I prepared one. I will tell us this is a flight search result. Can you identify each route for each route, departure times, the prices and so on. And then an important part, please present the results in JSON format, only respond with the JSON. So what this prompt will do is it will tell OpenAI to respond in JSON format. And if you don't know what JSON is, don't worry, we will see an example later. The only thing you need to know is it is a very easy to use text format versus just having a whole bunch of written text that looks different every time it comes back. And finally, of course, we need to pass the image. Now for this, we are going to use an image file. And we're going to map the files from the download file action from the step before. If you don't have these two intermediary Google Drive steps, you could also map directly the screenshot from the scraping B action at the beginning. Click OK to save. OK, so let's test out the OpenAI step. For this, I'm going to click on Auto Align here. So I'll, it'll bring everything nicely into focus. I'm going to zoom out a bit. And what I'll do is I'll unlink these two actions here by right clicking on the connection and unlinking this and then just moving the watch over to the Google Drive. And this will tell the scenario that I want to start here and not uh, retake that screenshot that we have. So let's click run once, see what happens. It has downloaded the file. It is, it has sent it to the OpenAI action and that has completed. So let's click on that little bubble here and see what it came back with. So here we have the input that we gave. And down here under choices, 
one message content, we have the prompt that it came back with. And this is precisely this JSON that we were asking it for. It gives you the information that it got from the screenshot in a way that is very easy to read for machines, which is great because this is what we're going to use in the later parts of this scenario. And most importantly, it has correctly identified the prices that we were looking for. So one thing to note for the second step, unfortunately, it starts JSON always with these three little thingies and the word JSON, which is a problem because the next step that we are going to add is a pass JSON function from make.com. And that always trips over something that doesn't start with a bracket, but with something else. So we need to cut that out. So how do we do this? We add another module called text parser. Let's just search for text parser. Here it is. And we will take the replace function. Now in this step, we will replace these three little dots and the word JSON, and we will replace it with an opening bracket and the word result. If you don't do this, the JSON pass action that we will need will not be able to read this. Now you will leave global match as is, switch case sensitive to no, leave multi-line and single line uh, like they are. And for text, we are going to enter the response from the opening AI prompt that we have. So that's here under choices, messages, content, as you can see a little, you can even see a little preview of what it will enter here. So let's just put this in here and hit save. Next, we need to add another text parser, another replace action. This time we're just going to replace the three little dots at the end of the open AI response. The new value here is a closing bracket. And again, case sensitive to null, single line no. The text now is whatever came back from the text pass action before. Hitting save. And finally, we are going to add a pass JSON action. For that, we are going to search for JSON and then select the pass JSON action. The JSON string is going to be the response from the text parser action in front of it. Let's hit save and let's try this out. Hitting a run once. downloading the file, it is passing it to OpenAI, and it has failed. Okay. Right, we've made a little mistake in the OpenAI action. If we look closely again at the result, we will see that the end of the message is cut off. And the reason for that is we can tell it here in the uh, advanced settings uh, on how many tokens to return. So basically how long the response uh, should be. And if we increase that to say, a max value of a thousand, then it should work. We can leave everything else as is. Hit okay to save and let's run it one more time. And this is exactly why I like to save um, certain things in intermediary steps. Now it has run successfully. So let's check out the result. So you can click up here, then in the output bundle and you can see the result. And this is again, the, the, the reason why we chose JSON for this, because as you can see now, it gives you a very structured response for every single slide uh, that was in that screenshot. And we can now easily t pick out that price that we want to write into the Google Sheet, which is the next step we're going to do. So adding another module, in this case, we're looking for Sheet, taking Google Sheet, and we want to update a specific cell in this case. Connecting your Google Drive and your Google Sheet works a little different than before. You don't need to enter an API key. There's a detailed instruction in the online help on how you can do this. And if you have done this, just like before, we'll select the spreadsheet and the cell that we want to update. So we're going to select one from the list. My spreadsheet is called Ryanair Price and the sheet name is address called Sheet. And the cell we want to update will be this one, so A2. So let's tell it to update A2. And the value for that update will be coming from the JSON response. So that we have here. And now I can just click easily through which value I want to update here. So let's pick price, save, and run one more time. All right, it has run successfully, so let's check out the Google Sheet. Okay, so I ran into a little error again because the OpenAI action was designing the JSON differently each time, and this is exactly not what we want. So I went ahead and modified the prompt a little bit. What I did was tell it to only look for this basic flute price that we have down here and ignore all the prices up here and then specify what my JSON should look like. For example, now for flight one, we have departure time flute price. We have for flight two, we have departure time flute price and so on. Now, every time it runs, the JSON will look the same. Now I can update the 
Google Sheet action back here with the true price of like what saving and running it again. And now the 2199 have made their way to the Google Sheet. Now we have one more problem and that is then the value it has entered in that cell is not a number value, but it is a mixture of numbers and a little character, the Euro character back here. Back here. I find it fascinating that we have an AI that can casually read that image as if it's nothing. But then we have the problem that Euro sign trips over the formatting of an Excel sheet. Welcome to the future. So we need to remove this so that Google can actually use this information uh, and calculate it. So let's change that too. But luckily this is an easy fix. So what we will do is we'll add a function called substring. You can find it over here where it says A and there is a function called substring. And what that will do is it will just take a string, a text, and it will cut off certain things from that text. And what we need to do is we need to cut off two, two characters at the end, the euro sign and the space. And for that, we will ask it for the length of the text because the price might be one euro, it might be 10 euro, it might be 100 euro. So we don't know how long it is at the beginning. So for that, we will ask it for the length of the text and then subtract two. For that, you will need to switch over here into the math fun functions and pick this minus operator. Otherwise, it will not do a calculation. It will just think it, it is. It should enter text. With this, we finally get our correct price in the correct cell. So one thing I still need to do is to switch over this Google Sheet to recognize different number formats because computers are still too stupid to recognize this as a number value. In case you run into this problem as well, you just go in here into File and then Settings. And here you can switch out certain things. So I need German. Now it has recognized this as a number. Let's format the entire row as numbers, that'll do the trick, euro. And finally, here we go. So, okay, so now it has finally recognized this as a euro number and now we can do a calculation. For example, we can just tell it to subtract this from that. And now the only thing left to do is to compare these two prices and send an email if the price has gotten cheaper. So we will add a Another Google Sheet action here. This time we're going to get a cell value connecting the Google Sheet again. We will get the value from the cell that we just updated and we need to get the second price that we need to compare against. So for that, you can just clone this step here and just clone the module. And now everything is already set and you can just switch out the cell value here. Now for the last step, we will send a Gmail, send an email over here. Connect to Gmail, add an email address. Subject, choose any subject you like, like book now, content, whatever. Okay, and now it should only trigger if one price is bigger than the other. For this, we will use this filter up here. So let's click setup filter, the label is price comparison. And we only want to continue that scenario if a certain condition is met. And the condition is the new value has to be less than the old value. Now you can come back to the beginning and connect the scraping B action again. You can leave this upload download step in here if you like. The trigger moves to the front of the scenario. We can clean this up again. And there you have it. You finished your Ryan S. Scraper with state-of-the-art computer vision and a lot of crude string manipulation towards the end. But you will see that this works. Just like this, you've set up a web scraper using computer vision for one of the most unscrapable websites out there. I know everybody says this, but I have a really small channel. So if you found this video helpful in any way, please leave a like or a comment. This will help me out a lot. Of course, the whole point of this video was just to show what is technically possible with make.com and how you can easily set something like this up for yourself. What you do with this is, of course, up to you. And if this video made you curious what else you could do with make.com and the OpenAI services, I've also made a tutorial on transcribing audio files with the help of OpenAI Whisper. So maybe you want to check that out next. So thank you very much for watching and please let me know if you have any questions.